Hi everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. This is where we bring your Python skills to life. I'm sure you're like me in that you have lots of photo files or JPEGs in different locations on your computer, in the cloud, on your phone, cameras, USB sticks and so on. For our phones we often use cloud services but for cameras and other downloaded images it can be a little bit trickier to manage. For example, I have a Canon camera that I frequently copy photos from to my computer. The camera doesn't have any location data and the file stamp is the time I copied the files to my computer, which could be months after they were taken. This means that when I'm looking for a particular event or location, I often end up having to manually search through these files in an image software. So wouldn't it be nice if we could use Python to help search for and manage image files on your computer by quickly extracting metadata from the files and processing them based on certain criteria. In this series of videos, that is what we're going to do. We'll write Python code to find digital image files and extract key metadata, including geoinfo, dates, and camera detail. We'll also look at how to process raw files and even generate thumbnails. In this particular video, we'll focus on the search techniques to find image files in directories and subdirectories. We'll look at the basic elements in the photo metadata, such as the camera make and model, as well as the time the photo was taken. So we'll start off with a few simple searches and then build our code up as we go along. To extract the information from the images, we're going to use a Python library called Pillow. It's a simple install. It's pip3 install pillow at the command prompt. And once we have that, then we'll load the libraries into our program. Pill is the Python image library. And we'll also load the tags. And the tags is, is like a dictionary that converts the numeric values of the EXIF data to something meaningful. So first thing we'll do is load the image file. I have one here, an example that was taken in Branson, Missouri last year, and we'll use that as an example. And once we load the image file, then we'll extract the EXIF data with the uh, EXIF get function or the image get function. So now this means that the EXIF data is a dictionary that has all the values from the image. And if we run a standard dictionary print, we'll see what is in the EXIF data variable. And as you can see, a lot of information, a lot of it is encoded in numbers. Um, so that's not super useful to us. Um, so the way we're going to get around that is use the tags library to convert the numbers to meaningful information from the uh, EXIF data. And now if we run this, we'll have more meaning, we need to put a space here between just to make it easier to read or a tab. And now we have what comes off the file from the camera, it gives the camera make, model, resolution, exposure, and lots of, if you see down at the bottom, you have the GPS info, which is the location data of it. And that's a lot of gobbledygook too, but we will convert that in future videos to something meaningful. So now we're going to change up our program so that we can go through a bunch of files and not just one. And the way we're going to do that is import the OS library. And then we'll change the directory to a folder that I have on my desktop with a whole bunch of photos. And we'll go through each one and get the relevant data. So we'll use the um, OS list there to go through every file and we'll send this through our function. My program generated an error here because I didn't have a try and accept bracket and there were files in the directory that were not image files. So we'll need to do this and trap the exception so that we know which files didn't work. I'll also put a qualifier here to make sure that it's uh, exif data does exist in the file before printing out or trying to print out these variables. And when we run this, we get the full list of metadata from each one of the files. So this is a lot of data and it's not terribly useful to us for each one of those files. So let's be more specific here and try and extract the information that we're actually looking for. To get the codes from the uh, exit data, 
we need a reference table. And a good reference table is at exiv2.org. I'll put the link in the uh, comments below. But this gives all the different codes and what they mean in the EXIF data. So for example, we want 271, which is the maker, the camera or the device maker, and 272, which is the model. And if we search for the date here, and as you can see, that's 36867 is the code for the original time the photo was taken. So there are other values here as well. As you can see, it's a long, long list. But for our purposes, we're going to take the maker, model, date, and the name of the file. We don't need a reference table for the name of the file. We'll have that in a variable that we'll pass to our function. So to get our specific items, we need to make some variables and get the data with the codes. 271 is the make, 272 is the model, and then we looked on the reference table and we saw that uh, 36867 is the date and time that the uh, photo was generated. So we'll update the print statement to print out just those specific variables, put an else clause in, in case there are any issues that just say it's a bad file or doesn't have the data. And if we run this, we should get a list of models and make of cameras or devices and the actual date the photo was taken from the list of images in the test photo directory. And this can be useful to go through a large list of photos and quickly determine which camera or device took the picture and what the actual date the photo was taken um, to quickly determine if this is part of your search. You're probably going to have subdirectories in your directories of images that you will want to search through as well. So we can accomplish that by using the patlib library in Python. So we'll import that. And then we will update our routine to call the image for processing. We'll use the patlib rglob or recursive globbing function to make sure that we include the subdirectories. We'll use the asterisk on the rglob function to include all files. We'll check for, to make sure that the file is actually a file. And then we'll put a try accept bracket to trap the files that are not images that could cause the program to crash. Now, if we just put a print statement in the accept bracket, we'll get a lot of noise in our output. So the way we're going to deal with this is we're going to create a log file so that the files that are not images and get trapped in our accept, uh, try accept bracket, they're actually going to be written to the file. So we'll have a cleaner output on our list of files. And I will do that to all the try accept brackets in the program so we can clean up our code. Now, when we run this, we'll get a clean list of all the files in our directory and subdirectories that have EXIF data and the ones that have the specific criteria we're looking for. When we look in the log files, we'll see the files that were not included in our list because of incompatible formats or not image files. And this is a good way to be sure that we included all the image files or if we need to troubleshoot why a particular file is not showing up in our list. OK, so this is great, but it's a little bit inefficient. A better way to do this might be to filter out the file types by using regex and then creating a filter to just look for BMPs, JPEGs, PNGs, and so on. We'll also need to do it this way in the next video when we're processing raw files and Apple HEC files. In summary, we looked at the search techniques for getting metadata from image files in directories and subdirectories. We also looked at getting specific elements from the camera or device like the make and the model, and also the date the picture was taken. In the next video, we're going to look at how to work with Apple HEC files and raw images. All the code used in this video is in my GitHub repository at the link shown here. I'll also put the link in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content or learned something, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And until the next time, take care.